Now this is Rocket Knight Adventures on the Sega Genesis being played on original console hardware. Capturing this footage using a composite yellow video cable into my DVD recorder. Cap uh, that DVD recorder is exporting HDMI to my Windows 10 laptop using my Vivitar USB capture dongle, which apparently is the only dongle that will work with this DVD recorder that I'm using. This is the first Genesis video I've made using my DVD recorder capturing an HDMI to my laptop because in the past my Genesis captures were recorded on DVD. So now I'm just capturing them directly to my laptop at 60 frames a second at 720p. So YouTube will not complain about playing back this footage at 60 frames a second, which I couldn't do prior when I was using the DV when I was using DVD recordings. So arguably a higher quality higher quality recording even though we're capturing from a composite video connection. So the the picture is still kind of blurry and noisy. But I'm playing this on a CRT. It's my JVC DVD CRT. I think it's from a 2004, 2005. It's got stereo speakers on it. So this is similar to a television that I would be using if I had a Genesis in the early 2000s. So there is that. I did play this game without recording commentary earlier. And I'm just going to go around and say it. This game is actually kind of mid. <laughs> It has potential. I think it's a proof of concept is actually not bad. I remember liking this game quite a bit when I played it on the emulator about 15 or 20 years ago. But that was because I had save states. There's going to be a point about half an hour into this game, maybe 20 minutes into this game, where you're going to have a bunch of... It doesn't, by the way, it doesn't matter how many continues you have, just so you know. Eventually, when you reach stage three, there is going to be a boss. And that's not going to be a boss. There is going to be a minecart level with a jump that's very difficult to hit. And you will lose all of your lives and you will lose all of your continues as soon as you get to that jump. So much like Battletoads or Lion King back in the day, um, it doesn't matter how many continues you have, you will eventually lose all of your lives and your continues when you get to that one jump. So we're just going to, this is not going to be a research stream. This is going to be me documenting how far I make it into the game before inevitably I slam into that brick wall and I lose all my continues and have to start over from the beginning of the game. That's what I'm, that's, I know what's going to happen because this happened to me twice in the last two days. So I'm just going to document it here. That's too, that's too quick to get to the demo screen. So we'll play on the easy difficulty only because we have more continues to play with. This game is pretty much a rental. If you, if you rented this game from Blockbuster back in the early 90s when it launched, that's pretty much the experience you can expect here. I can't imagine spending $60 in a game like this. Because like I said, you'll play the game for half an hour, you'll, reach, you'll hit a brick wall, you'll lose all of your lives, you'll lose all of your continues, and you'll be forced to play that 30 second string, that 30 minute string, every time you lose all your continues. There is no password. Basics. You can attack. There's a meter at the top of the screen on the right-hand side. I can hold down the button. And it charges up my attack. I release the button. I do a somersault in place. I can also release the button and charge in any direction. Like diagonally up. Or straight ahead. That's it. That's pretty much all you need to know how to play. That's pretty much all you need to know to play this game. Uh, the hearts are the hearts are right there at the top of the screen showing how much life I have. There's one more, right? There it is. So yeah, that's how you play the game. <laughs> Everything else is all set pieces. Uh, you can also grab onto these um, branches, and you kind of have a little bit of momentum as you slide down the branch, which is good for speed runs, I suppose, but there's not a lot to it.
That. Wow. Didn't expect him to die so soon. <laughs> Do I have unlimited lives here? I think I have unlimited lives here. <laughs> yeah, I think I have unlimited lives. <laughs> oh well. Let's not play that gun. Where they at? Ow. I guess one of the problems I have with this game is that the the aspect ratio was way too confined. So when you charge ahead like that, it's kind of hard to see what's in front of you. So. You aren't... There, like I said, there is that one part with the minecart later in the game where you're going to wind up losing all of your lives because you can't see too far... You can't see far enough ahead of you to predict where you're going to land from the jump. So there are a number of instances of this game where you'll miss a jump or take damage because you can't see ahead of you, which is not great. And there are weird little set pieces like this, where it's like enemies appear in one screen, you clear them out, and you click them, there's no real challenge for it. So. Odd level design. I can get behind them. Don't need to. Just a second. That's not a great waterfall effect in the back. It just seems kind of distracting. <laughs> it's a very demo scene looking background. But I just, it, it just looks, uh, it just looks bizarre and ugly. <laughs> and again, I'm watching it on a CRT, so I'm seeing the image the way it was meant to be seen. <laughs> Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> okay, he's gone. Weird. So I would get the side-scrolling flying stage. And now, I, now I'm back to having one life left. Okay, fine. Again, there's not much to this. There are no special attacks. You just mash on the attack button. It's like a Sunsoft game. <laughs> like Batman Return of the Joker or the Game Boy version of Batman. A very simplistic side-scrolling shooting section here. I mean, I remember the uh, sequel, the Super NES, had a top-down scrolling shooter where there was, there was a bit more to it. This is just super basic, unfortunately. If I can hit him twice, then dodge. Careful. Timing on that's kind of rough, so you have to practice it. Got him. You have to hit him twice when his head comes out. Of course, it wouldn't be a Konami game without, you know, Medusa, without sine wave movements on a Medusa like in it, right? <laughs> anyway. I did like the, I do kind of like this part of the game, you know, where the enemies are on fire, too. <laughs> so, yeah, that bit. I always thought that was weird. It's like, yeah, they're just minding their own business trying to save their lives. They can still hurt you unless you kill them. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Just put them out of their misery, I suppose. <laughs> Video games. <laughs> Except for the whole thing with the branches, when you hang upside down for the branches, this awesome possum character doesn't seem to be... I don't know why this character is a possum, really. Like, I don't understand why they decided to make this mask out of possum. Ow. Took two dumb hits there. Ow! Darn it! You have to stay ahead of the firewall on the right side of the screen, by the way. And that is a very nice flame effect they have going on, so I'm a big fan of that. 
But most of the graphics in this game aren't really that impressive. So it's a very C plus B minus game in terms of visuals, I'm afraid. Ow! Keep missing that jump. Ow. So the last jump is always low. Ow! Should have charged up an attack. Should have charged up a jump there. <laughs> That's probably one of the hardest parts of the game until you get to the third stage anyway. Dumb hit I took. Hold on, I a, need that health. Wow, that was close. I need that health. That was a one up, I think. That was a one up. No complaints, though. So I needed that. <laughs> Again, I don't know why this is here. This is a mimic, I guess. I don't know why that's there. There are no treasure chests in this game. <laughs> but anyway. There's the boss behind us. Yeah, there's the boss. <laughs> so I got that uh, banana I needed for a little bit of health. Kind of a fake out here. <laughs> Yeah, these blue ticks are invincible, so just kind of jump over them. And eventually a red uh, mine will be dropped, and I have to jump, I have to kill that. Missed it. There it is. Ah, careful! Got duck. Got him. Whew. It was dicier than it should have been. It's not a hard fight. It's just you can easy, you can make a lot of mistakes if you work your spot. Again, this game isn't that hard, but eventually you run out of continues when you reach half when you get halfway through the game. So that's disappointing. Sure. Yeah, I mentioned the music has a lot of energy. And it has that. It sounds very much like a treasure soundtrack. Like it sounds a lot like a, like a Guardian Heroes or a, or a Gunstar Heroes. It has that vibe. Obviously, using the Genesis sound chip. But again, I said this before. The Super NES soundtrack. This is for the sequel to this game, Sparkster. Low key, one of the best soundtracks on the console. This is some good music here, though. <laughs> Don't get stuck in the corner. Ow. That bad aim. Ah. Shouldn't be this hard. I think my controller's just kind of jacked. Got him. I never really understood that effect because it looks like they want to make it look like the the monsters looming over the mountains in the background. But the scale isn't right, so it's just it's just a weird set piece. 
Ow. Bastard. Let me get that fruit. Again, not a great, not a great water effect. What are you gonna do? It's not bad, I guess. It's color. I guess we're using color math. This part's weird. Uh, just a second. Bat, because there's a background. You, you could, like in a Castlevania 4, you can go into the background here. But you, ha you, you can't go into the background unless you can get on some platforms. And we'll see a bit later. I made it. Made it. Uh, there they are. Those are the platforms you ride. Now we're in the background. So once we're in the background, we can go to the little blue branch right here. So we can get behind the brambles. So that's the trick they got going on here. This stupid plane switching trick. I never really liked it. A lot of 16-bit games were doing this back in the early 90s. Uh, Shadow Dancer did it. Super Mario World did it. Ghouls and Ghosts did it. They did it here too. <laughs> it was the thing they wanted to do. Uh, have to go into the background. Give me a second. Missed. Took a dumb hit there. Okay, that snake is going to be in the background occasionally, so be careful. So you can see it when it switches planes. I don't know what that was. Careful. Okay, that was dumb. I lost track of where I was. Hit him. Got him. Come on, how did I not? There he is. Because I hit the orange thing. Ah! That was bad. I was going to say, I'm surprised I didn't die there. Wow. Dicey. We need to get to the foreground. Give me a second. See? I took a dumb hit there because I didn't know how to get to the foreground. That is a terrible checkpoint. Ugh. Old school. That's a terrible checkpoint. I have to beat that boss again, don't I? Okay, so hit the, hit the platform. I'll switch us to the foreground. Okay, let's try it. Made it out. I can't hit that orange ball at least. Made it out. Wow, that was close. Ow! Bastard. Couldn't hit him. Here he comes. Hey, that was weird. That was really weird what I just did there. Got the orange ball. Miss. Here he comes. Miss. Got the orange ball once.
darn it. Come on. Here he comes. How do I avoid that? Ah, you want to avoid, you want to hit, the, avoided the hit that time. Got him. Whew. Again, terrible uh, checkpoint. Okay, drop down here. Got him. All right, now I made it. <laughs> Dicey, huh? Okay, I screwed that up a second. Drop. Stupid. Got it. Dicer than it should have been, but here we are. Whoops! Not good. What? Not good. Not whack. This isn't too bad, give me a second. Uh, you don't lose life when you're underwater here, apparently. You can, you can kind of take your time, except for this part. Careful. A lot of slowdown here, don't, don't know what that was about. That was dumb. You don't really need to use the branches here, it's just whatever. We good? Not nah. good. Okay, uh This is a weird set piece right here, give me a second. Again, there's not much to this. <laughs> just gotta stay low. It's not okay. This is the part where I'm gonna lose all my continues. So fair warning. So there's one jump here that's really bad, and we're gonna lose all of our lives and all of our continues. Here they come. Whoops. A lot of flickering here. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> Where's that blast processing you were talking about? Yeah, a lot of flickering going on here. Poor Genesis. Heads up. Whoop! That's the part. That's the part where I'm going to lose all my lives right here. God, unbelievable. Well, totally unbelievable. Remember, this game got blockbustered. <laughs> You don't want people to beat the game, so as soon as they get halfway through, you have to steal all their continues. Okay, we're almost there. Come on. Careful! Oh. So I'm gonna lose all my continues right here, right? Gotta love it. Get good, am I right? And when we lose all of our continues, we'll have to play this this entire half hour of the game all over again. It's amazing. This is how most video games well not most video games, but games that tried to make themselves harder than usual would do crap like that. Lion King did it. Uh, what was it? Obviously, obviously Ghouls, Ghouls and Ghosts was doing this crap. Act Razor 2 did a bit of this. The North American version of Act Razor 2 did that. Silhouette Mirage did that on the PlayStation. They would make games intentionally harder so that people couldn't beat them during the rental. Too bad I don't have a face cam like every other live streamer out there. Every other retro live streamer. I 
I'm 98 hot is the truth. So, uh, Whoops. Ow. These enemies just keep respawning until you reach the end of the platform, right? Whoa! whoa. Why should have just done that? <laughs> uh, do I want to risk it? No. Risk it for the biscuit. Nope. Now I have to land this. Wow! I made it! Accidentally. Wait! Hey! What the heck was that? What was that? Hey, what's my checkpoint? Whoops! That's a better checkpoint. Whoops! Wow, dude. <laughs> Video games. Unbelievable. Whoops! Unbelievable. Okay. What was that about? I said, sure, just, I was supposed to walk to the left. So I screwed myself. I was supposed to just walk to the left. Just now I have to play through this entire half hour all over again from the beginning. As I said. Retro video games, huh? So just for funsies, I'll go to the hard difficulty mode. You get to see how frustrating this gets. I don't think I don't even think you get the true ending until you beat the game the hardest difficulty level. So you basically have to just raw dog it. You can't even raw dog it. You have to like be perfect. <laughs> I mean, you're still gonna take hits. I think you start with fewer life. I think you start with fewer life hearts in the hardest difficulty level. But yeah. So what do we think? This game. This game would be a C. I think it's not terrible until you get to that one jump where you lose all of your continues and all of your lives. That's what I was afraid of, really. So, what are the graphics? Nah, maybe a C plus at best. The art isn't great. I mean, like, th like these visuals aren't great. Like it's halfway decent pixel art. Some of the effects are nice, but it's barely a C plus at best. The fire effects are nice. Animation's not bad. Uh, music, music has potential. Like they're trying to like make like a rousing symphonic score using the synthesizer chip. It's 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 it has its moments. It ha so look at that, and I'm dead. <laughs> no more lives. Zero continues. <laughs> yeah, gotta love it. I guess. Um, pretty good use of the stereo sound spectrum from what I heard. But again, it's not a fantastic soundtrack. Like, it's B minus at best. And performance-wise, there's still a bit of slowdown. Again, this game feels like a proof of concept. It feels like a prototype that they decided to make into a mascot character. So this awesome possum character. Like I said, the character doesn't even need to be a possum, really. Except for the, except for the, the very few parts of the game that are related to the branch dangling. You don't really need to be a possum. This character could be basically any character, if we're being honest. You can't even attack any enemies while you're dangling upside down. So, again, it just feels like generic, you know, furry mascot. What are you going to do? Every video game had him back in the day. Remember, this game came out in an era where, but like, every month some mascot character or some side-scrolling mascot platformer like Bubsy would be released. Because everyone was trying to be the next Sonic. I don't blame them. It's just, you know. Again, it just feels like a. It feels like they were ma they got a corporate mandate to make a mascot character, and I guess they was they were kind of hoping that they could make someone. You know, like you like those little PC Engine mascot platformers. They got a they got a mandate to make a mascot platformer. 
So here we are. You know, Westerners love their talking animals, don't they? So we made a Disney character. <laughs> I guess is the logic. And why not make a furry hero? I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog was popular. So why not make another furry hero? <laughs> like Sherlock Hound back in the day. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? It's, it's a very... it's. It's not even an, I wouldn't call it an average platformer because the pacing is better than most platformers. But the level design is kind of flaky. Like, it has its moments, but there are a lot of weird set pieces that just seem gimmicky rather than innovative. And this, this particular, that particular part, that one jump is just really bad. The fact that I couldn't even see that I could just fall off the minecart, <laughs> that sucked. And the checkpoint is terrible. <laughs> So the fact that I was able to get past that one checkpoint was good, but I lost all my continues. What difference did it make? It's a shame. So yeah, I paid, what, $27 for this game. It's probably worth $35 loose these days. So it's a sham. It's a rental. I'm going to have to take it back, and maybe I'll get $13, $14 for it. So yeah, I played this game for an hour, and um, yeah, I played this game for like an hour and a half, basically over a week. Not good. And I remember liking this game when I rented it, on, when I played it on emulator. But, yeah. Yeah, I, have to, I have to go back and read what I said on Amusement to see why I liked it so much. I guess with save states, the game the game's more tolerable. Yeah, disappointing. So yeah, it's a C, but then that one bad area probably dropped you down to a C minus because you leave all the continues in one dumb area. And one dumb jump ruins the entire game. Because you lose all of your lives and you continue. It's just awful. But that's how a lot of video games were back then. So let's pretend I'm going to do an audio check here. Uh, sound. Three, four, five, four, three. I recorded this with my iMore triple driver earbuds plugged into my MPOW USB A audio adapter. It's plugged into my Windows 10 laptop using the camera with the Windows 10 camera app at 60 frames a second. This is a 768 by 13. It's a super VGA resolution basically, 768p. Uh, 60 frames a second on this. I played it on a CRT, but the DVD recorder got the component or the composite video input using the yellow cable. HDMI coming out of the device at 720p, captured, as I said, at 768p. I'll probably break out another, uh, I have a different device over here where I can convert a composite video to HDMI. So I'll test that out in a future video, see if I get a cleaner signal. But this is the first DVD, this is the first capture that I made using my DVD recorder in the HDMI output option that it provides but yeah this game is not good i'm afraid so i'm gonna have, i was hoping this would be one of my signature genesis games but now nah, this one's kind of lame so it's better than the it's better than x-men but that ain't saying much it's better than the nba showdown but nba showdown is just that game is just antiquated super archaic um, is it better than Super Baseball 2020? I'm going to say no. Is it better than Subterranea? Well, that game has the same problem where I can't get past the second stage. So, yeah, so we'll say it's the third best Genesis game I have in my collection so far. I'll put it right behind the NBA Live 96 and Monopoly, I guess. <laughs> I'll put it behind the Super Baseball 2020. So we'll do a ranking later. But yeah, this one's mid, 